kill me. Let's go into the kitchen drawer in the boat, get a knife and put it in here, in here, and hard, jab it in, jab it in, I'll cut that, cut it. I hate to say I am in the grip of a midlife crisis. Hammond is the most likely to cack his dax as a result of not eating carefully. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. I'm Richard Hammond. I'm James Bain. I'm on It's Gone Viral, and we're doing Who's Most Likely? Has it gone viral yet? <laughs> it will do, hopefully. <laughs>
Um, so I have some experience of accidentally offending the locals, so I'm going to nominate myself for that one very magnanimously. What did you exactly do to offend them? The Japanese? Yeah. I, I went to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it's your mere presence. <laughs> presence is slightly offensive to a, to a very cultured society like that one. They just think this man is too large and too fat and too hasty and just too inept. Who's most likely to have the worst midlife crisis? Most likely to have the worst midlife crisis. Ooh, that's interesting because we're all kind of around that age. Jeremy's old. He's, I, mean, I doubt he can remember his midlife crisis. He probably had one, but it would have been in black and white. Um, and Je Jeremy is a walking midlife crisis, I suppose. So that's what he's made of. James, midlife crisis, he would, but it might be having a different pie or changing a, a brown jacket for a, a tan jacket. That's probably far enough. No, oh, no, it's not going to be me again, is it? Because I think, I hate to say, I am in the grip of a midlife crisis. Richard Hammond. Richard Hammond, because, I mean, He's just, he's just become 50. He's the baby of the show. I'm 57 and Jeremy Clarkson is 90 something as far as I can make out. And if we've, if we've had them at all, they've already been and gone. But I think Hammond is in the thick of his. He's done a lot of dressing up. He's buying a lot of vintage cars. He's buying land. He's, he's, uh, he's just doing everything. He's wearing tweedy waistcoats. He's speaking like the bard he's grown a beard he's grown a moustache he's yeah he bought a scooter everything it's richard hammond it's real it's not a question of who's most likely it's who is and it's him wait a minute james has a, a bmw thousand rr which is a very fast motorcycle it's a brutally quick motorcycle he doesn't really ride it to its full extent <laughs> Um, I'll be honest, you could follow him quite easily on a bicycle. So, it's, but why does he have that? Mm, this is a question, there's evidence stacking up now that James is suddenly coming out as a front runner and he drives a, a Ferrari. I don't have a Ferrari, it's James. It's James May and he's having it right now because he drives a brilliantly coloured orange Ferrari and a, a fast motorcycle. It's James May, it's, it's answered itself. You know the expression dapper little man? It's funny nobody ever says dapper big man, do they? Look at that dapper big man over there. But Hammond is the classic dapper little man. He starts wearing tweed waistcoats and a little tailored jacket and his snazzy trousers. He doesn't wear the jean trouser anymore, whereas James and I still do. James has bought a red, oh no, James did buy a red anorak with a fur lining about 10 years ago and still wears it every single day. And nobody's had the heart to say to him, that's hideous. But I don't think that's a midlife crisis thing. As I said with James, that will have been, oh, I don't know, not putting a record back in its sleeve quite as quickly or as elegantly as he should, or not put, taking his library books back. Who are you most likely to save from a sinking ship? Oh, Christ, women, children, pets, the food, the beer, uh, the charts, the lifeboats, bottles of water, things from the souvenir shop. Yeah. If you had to choose between Jeremy and Richard, who are you going to choose? So the ship is going down, I can choose to save either Jeremy Clarkson or Richard Hammond, so I've got to think about the chances of survival. So we may end up on, say, a desert island or floating around on a piece of driftwood for weeks on end. I'd, I'd save Richard Hammond, because if I saved Jeremy Clarkson and we did end up adrift for two weeks, he would test me on film trivia, which he hasn't realised bores the arse off me, but he still does it. And I don't want that for two weeks drifting around with an old plank, so I'll take Richard Hammond, who would also be easier to cook. <laughs> as, a, as a qualifier to that, I'd, I'd like the option to be left alone on the desert top. <laughs> so you won't save anyone, really. <laughs> so, oh no, I'm really sorry, I didn't quite get to you in time. The ship. Just everyone on the ship. Just then, the captain, the purser, I don't know what sort of, a, if it's a ship, it'll have lots of crew on it. I'll save one of those. If you've had to choose between James and Richard? I couldn't, no, it just neither. Can we assume I've saved everybody else on the ship? 
Yeah, everyone else survived. It's just between James and Jeremy. And I've got to decide which one to save. Mm -hmm. Right, this is a complicated question because you've got, firstly, the practicalities of saving. Um, they're both, you know, bigger than me. Jeremy's enormously so and would be, I mean, there's every chance of it attempting to save him. I could end up dying as well. Because you're never going to, you're not going to pull him out of a porthole, are you? I mean, it's, it's, it's a horribly big unit. So that's, practically, that's going to be difficult and risky. Um, but then you've also got to think, see, James practically is going to be difficult because I'd be shouting, come on, James, hurry, 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 we've got to run. And, and it's not going to happen, is it? Um, but then equally, you've got to consider the rest of humankind. What are you inflicting on them by the saving of one or the other? Um, does humankind really want Jeremy saving? But then again, does humankind really need James saving? God, I'd have to think about it. I'd probably spend so long thinking about it, it'd be too late and I wouldn't be able to save either. So I think that's impossible to answer. Who would you least like to spend the night in a foreign prison with? Yourself? Yeah. Fair enough. Why would, what, what's wrong with your own company? Oh God, I promise I'll tears. No, no, me, well, I've been in a foreign prison, too, mm -hmm. by myself, and it's not much fun. So I've been, yeah, so it would be me. Last time we um, did the Who's Most Likely, you said that you had been to a foreign prison, so I wanted to ask you to elaborate on that a little bit. Two white. Two foreign prisons. How did you manage to get there? I escaped from one of them. It was quite, it was quite cunning. But uh, no, only it's just overnight stuff, you know, when I was a teenager. And uh, no, there wasn't really a prison. Well, it's a cell rather than a prison, although it felt quite prisony when you were in there. Wait, this foreign prison? <laughs> is it in a cell? Yes. Who else? Is it just two of us or is it like lots of other people? Just you two. It can be a bunk bed, it could be a single, it could be a double bed. Uh, do they do double yeah, beds in prison? Clear, I'm standing up all yeah. night. Let's be quite <laughs> clear about that. Um, right. Uh, most want to, or least? Uh, least. Okay. Um, now, I don't want to hurt him with this. I don't care. It's Jeremy. Simply because I'd rather with James, because James likes what he calls itchy prison blankets. That's weird. But he likes a single bed and an itchy prison blanket. In fact, one time in Bolivia, the accommodation that night, we had to doss up down in some little shepherd's hut in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and we were sharing, we opened the door and it was bliss because it was two little single beds. I love a single bed as well. But he likes a really itchy blanket, which means he'd be very happy, which means he'd shut up. Let me go, JC. I did share a tent with him in the North Pole many years ago in the Top Gear era, and he, he accuses me of snoring and all sorts of things. But actually, Jeremy Clarkson sort of talks in his sleep. He, get, he gets into his sleeping bag and he puts it over his head and then he does this sort of Tourette swearing and muttering thing. So it's like being in a tent with a blasphemous maggot. It's really unpleasant. Well, in the first round of this that we ever did, James did mention that you, as to quote James, he said, you um, kind of have a Tourette's-like swearing when you're asleep. I do when I'm in a tent with him in the North Pole, which is when it happened. And I'm surprised, frankly, you could hear above the sound of his sinuses, which sound like the tectonic plates of the San Andreas Fault are shifting and then being amplified through the Grateful Dead sound system. He is one noisy snorer. When we were in Madagascar, he was four tenths along from me and I had to, in the middle of the night, get up, disassemble my tent and then re-erect it half a mile away to have any chance of sleeping. And all anyone talked about in the morning was who was in that tent. Was, well, I think I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Who's most likely to end up in hospital whilst shooting? Oh, come on, you can't ask that because there is evidence to suggest that the three of us one most likely to end up in hospital whilst shooting is the one who always does end up in hospital whilst shooting. Richard Hammond. <laughs> By a country mile. I mean, touch wood that it's Richard Hammond. Yeah, we, um, that was the first question we asked Hammond, and I didn't even think about what a stupid question it is. It is, it, it's, it, yes, that's like, 
it's, it's just, yes. I mean, he always ends up in hospital. He's never, ever taken a pair of his own trousers off. They're always cut off by a paramedic. He always goes home with, as a, in an air ambulance. There's no need to ever book him a taxi back home because he's not going to need it. It has to be Richard Hammond, based on precedent, um, history, followed by, well, I, I only have to say who's most likely. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's either Richard Hammond because he has an accident or Jeremy Clarkson because he disintegrates. I think these days it's least likely to be me, which is a bit of a turn up. Who would pack the least appropriate item for a foreign trip? Only because, am I allowed to say this? He did once, we, we once traveled to, which country did we go to? Namibia. And he produced a giant rubber dildo to put on my car, which is something he sort of quite likes to do. But that must have mean it was, it was in his luggage. So he was traveling through Heathrow and various other airports with a three foot rubber penis in his bag. He must have been. But well, it certainly didn't come out of my bag. Can I yeah. say this? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. Now you say, I put that because I'm a bit thick. Okay. So I might, you know, put a, put a swimming trunks in a pole or something. I don't know. That's possible. That had, <laughs> I did turn up at, where did I turn up at? Somewhere really old. I turned up in like Arctic kit. Th that's a problem. But then Jeremy and James each turn up all of their kit is inappropriate. Well, I, I need you to clarify this. Uh, James said that Jeremy once bought him a present to put on the front of his car, which happened to be quite a large sexual object. Oh, yes, it did, did, yes, yes. Is that true? He, he, he did do that, yes, yes. <laughs> Who is most likely to get food poisoning and have an accident whilst traveling? When you say an accident, you mean shit themselves. <laughs> yes. I'll be really honest, that's happened to all of us at some point. We've done a lot of traveling. We've all had, I don't know, we've actually shat ourselves. Actually, I think, I think Jeremy did, or was it Hammond? When we were in the Middle East, one of them did. So it's not me. Um, I've not shat myself. I think it's probably, probably Hammond. Again, that's two points ahead. Hammond is the most likely to cack his dax as a result of not eating carefully. Oh, bless him. Jeremy does seem to be be quiet, quite, quite constitutionally sound as far as his guts go. I'm very careful because I read a lot of rules and had one or two bad experiences, so I follow the boil it, peel it, leave it rule of prayer, sort of camping and so on. I think Hammond doesn't, so really the odds are stacked against him. It's like not wearing a face mask; he's just going to get it, you know. And to be fair, in Madagascar, you had it thrown on you. What, the shit? Yeah. Yes. But I just didn't breathe it in, you see. I know the rules. I mean, Andy Wilden, our producer, is, uh, he once in, in Iraq, on that trip in the Middle East, three wise men, um, realised that he needed to get to the lavatory in a big hurry. And the nearest lavatory he could think of was in his room. And he got in the corridor of the hotel to the door of the room, and I guess we've all been there, whether it's coming out of this end or the other end. Key went in and the buttocks were not strong enough to hold the uh, gallons of brown liquid in. So he simply thought, well, there's no point going into my room and doing it in there since it's already coming out and just stood in the hotel corridor and sh** himself. Um, gallons and gallons running down his legs into his shoes. And then what he, once he'd finished, took everything off, then went into his room so that his room didn't get soiled. Um, so Wilman's a trophy. Everywhere we go, he has a ton of issues. And of the three of us, of course, it would be uh, it would be amazingly. It's Richard Hammond, even though he doesn't eat anything local. I don't understand how he manages to get as ill as he does because he just eats biscuits or army rations, or and yet somehow he's always ill. I mean, I'll try anything. I think I'm made of iron inside, and. Um, James is quite good at trying things, and he, he and I don't seem to get bothered by it. Not sure why. Annoyingly, it's not Jeremy because he's barely human and has a sort of cast iron stomach arrangement on him. You know, cows have, is it cows have lots of stomachs? Jeremy has like more, they're all enormous. Um, 
I, I don't, it's not him, uh, unfortunately. James has had so many hot curries. He and I once had a chili eating competition. We were in a Chinese restaurant many years ago in London, just having supper. And there was a little tiny bowl of chilies in between us. And I said, oh God, then we'll have one each. Ah, <laughs> little dried chilies. And I ate one and he ate one. And we had to look at each other. And I, I felt it burning through here. <laughs> and then he, nothing. So I assumed, well, wait a minute, I got a dud. So let's do it again. And again, it's burning out my face and no reaction from James. And I did it four times until I realized he doesn't notice them anymore. So sadly, it's not James because I think he's burnt all of that out of his system. Um, I'm from Birmingham. We don't like complicated food. So it's gonna be me, isn't it? Who is most likely to get seasick? You. Yeah. Have you been seasick before? Yeah. Was it bad? Yeah. Have you ever been seasick? Nearly. Nearly. Not quite. Not now, quite. I don't think there is necessarily a worse thing that you can suffer from. I mean, obviously, for the first 20 minutes, you genuinely are worried you're going to die. And then for the next 20 minutes, you're genuinely worried that you might not. Yeah, I mean, you just sit there going, kill me. <laughs> Go into the kitchen drawer in the boat, get a knife and put it in here, in here, and hard, jab it in, jab it in, I'll cut that, cut it. <laughs> It's a dreadful, debilitating disease, and I think um, I've never. Hammond was once on television being sick, but I happen to know while he was in a boat. Being in a boat had nothing to do with, with while he was why he was being sick, and the enormous amount of wine he drank the night before did. <laughs> um, I've seen this hammer that uh, this happen on a couple of occasions. He was sort of sick on me once in a boat and a small boat trip so yeah he's not good at that sort of thing none of us really no no none of us get seasick I, I, I can't i don't think we do i mean sick of but another stuff but we no no i don't think we would get seasick we're hardened travelers who is the most likely to live the longest Probably Hammond, because he's the fittest and the youngest. Well, no, you mean live to the highest age or live longer than... I mean, Richard Hammond's already got 10 years on us, because, you know, I'm 61, May's pushing 60, and I was very nearly there. And, um, and then he looks older. He claims he's buff now, as he told you. Oh, James May, that's because in lockdown, he, he just started cycling everywhere. It's not like he's short of cars, but anyway, he started cycling everywhere, getting in everyone else's way. And um, and now he actually said to me the other day, I'm, I'm, I think I'm rather buff. Just like, you're literally the least buff person I've ever seen in my life. Richard Hammond is the youngest, but he likes trying to kill himself, so that he's got a bit of a joker. Uh, I think I think if you apply the rule of sod, it would be Jeremy, because he probably least deserves to, so he's the one who will. <laughs> Obviously, there's every chance I might interrupt the process by dying in a massive crash. Um, <laughs> James, uh, I mean, he moves quite slowly, so we're conserving energy. Jeremy, uh, I'm, I'm not saying he's on a health kick, but he's been the cigarettes. Um, live the longest. I suppose possibly Clarkson, annoyingly, because he stubbornly, you know, he had pneumonia and he didn't die. And there's more of it. So he could sort of keep using up material and wearing himself out. And there'd still be enough left to make up a normal sized human being. So, <laughs> class. Thank you oh. so much for speaking to us. I've really enjoyed it. Well, excellent. That's lunch then. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, James. I expect we'll be seeing you. when the next thing comes out, you'll be back on with more fatuous questions about who's most likely to. I think we <laughs> might do it to you two, would be a good game. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> Well, let's think about that because um, obviously it would require a bit of thought to come up with some good questions and I'd have to do a bit of research. But yes, well, I'll speak to my people. Fun as always, so thank you very much, both of you. Hey, what's going on? I'm Kevin Hart. Hi, my name's Eric Snow Street. Hi, I'm Margo. I'm Journey. I'm James McAvoy. I'm Daniel Ratcliffe. I'm Rebel Wilson. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. I'm going to be translating some Scottish tweets for It's Gone Viral. On It's Gone Viral. Ooh. On It's Gone Viral.